Well, are you ready? Yes. From here starts the speaking test. This is the speaking mock test of the International English Language Testing System taking place in Ross Isles Academy. The candidate is Bahar Fakhri Mugaddam. The candidate number is 01413278. The examiner is Joseph. Examiner number 443533. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Joseph. Would you please tell me your full name? My name is Bahar Fakhri Mugaddam. And what can I call you? Bahar. Can I see your identification, please? Sure. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Uh, in the first part of the exam, I will ask you some personal questions. First, I'd like to ask you about friends. What kind of people do you like to have as friends? Actually, I don't have many friends. But I try to uh, become friends uh, to people who are confident because I believe they can uh, give that confidence to me too. Do you like face-to-face -face conversations with people? Yes, I prefer to uh, meet my friends because um, I'm not a huge fan of chatting on social media. And how often do you meet your friends? Um, actually, when I was younger, I used to meet them at least once a week, but these days, because of uh, this pandemic, I couldn't see them. Now let's move on to talk about taking a break. How often do you take a break? Um, to be honest, I like to uh, go on holidays. After my exams, I prefer to have a short road trips. What do you usually do during a break? Uh, we usually go to north of Iran on holidays and I uh, always go to beach. Do you prefer a long break or several short breaks? Uh, definitely several short breaks. They th I think they're uh, better than a long break. Now let's move on to talk about science. Did you like science as a subject back in school? Um, definitely no, because my major uh, is not related to science. I study math. What kind of science lessons did you take at school? Um, I have chemistry and physics. And how has science helped you learn better? Uh, as I mentioned, I'm not good at science at all, but uh, I think if I practice more, chemistry lessons uh, would help me a lot in my physics. All right, so this is the end of part one. In part two, I'm going to give you a topic, and I'd like you to talk about it for two minutes. Before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say and you can make notes if you wish. But don't worry if I stop you. Do you understand? Yes. Now? The topic is, describe a thing that you bought and felt very pleased about it. Here's your cue card. Here's your pen. Thank you and you have one minute to think about it and make notes. Your one minute time starts now.
All right, your one minute preparation time is over and you can speak for up to two minutes starting from now. Uh, I want to talk about a book. Uh, it named uh, I Could Leave Me If I Could. Uh, I Leave Me If I Could. It's written by uh, my favorite singer. Uh, her name is Halsey. She's an American singer. And the book is a collection of poetry. Uh, I really enjoy to read these uh, poems because um, I'm very interested to know uh, people's uh, lives and their stories. And this book is also about her life, um, what is like uh, as a well-known person, and her mental issues and these things. And um, I should add another thing that is very important for me. It's my camera. Actually, it's uh, a gift which my dad gave me three years ago. Uh, however, I don't go to any uh, related courses about photography. Um, I believe I can um, take, him, take good photos and my family always uh, tells me that I have talent in it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, these days, because I don't have much free time, I can't go uh, to photography courses, but I'm planning to do it in the summer. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to uh, do it as a professional work because uh, I'm not interested to do this as a job. All right, your two minute time is over. Please hand me back a pen and a paper. Thank you. All right, now let's move on to part three. We've been talking about something you bought that you felt so pleased about it. And now I'd like to ask you some questions related to this. Do people in your country try new gadgets and appliances in the market? Why? Why not? Um, I don't think so. Um, I think Iranian people don't like to uh, somehow try new things. Maybe the most important reason is uh, we can't um, easily access to new gadgets in our country and we have to uh, wait for a while to uh, be able to buy them. And some people find it easy to follow instructions while assembling a gadget, but others find it difficult. Why is it so? Uh, I think uh, always when we want to try a new thing, it could be different for us, but uh, after a while, it will be easier and be used to it. All right. Do people feel uncomfortable using new products at home or work? Why and why not? Uh, as I mentioned, it's not um, easy for them at first, but um, I think when they use to it, uh, they become interested in them. Do people feel, uh, well, this is what I asked already. Uh, do advertisements play a key role in promoting innovative and trendy products these days? Uh, definitely yes, because I think advertisements introduce us new things and without them uh, we can't be aware of what is trend these days. And um, are people now preferring to buy local products than imported items? Why and why not? Mm, could you please? Sure, I'll go again. Are people now preferring to buy local products than imported ones? Why and why not? 
I don't think so because um, I'm not like this. I prefer to buy important things, not just simple things. And do you think good decision making can be taught? Uh, I think um, uh, schools have um, plays actually the most important role these days and we can learn a lot of things not uh, uh, just about our subjects from school but unfortunately in my country is not like this and uh, our schools uh, just focus on education they don't uh, introduce us um, gadgets and how we can use technology. And did you have the same experience? Yes, for sure. But I think uh, they have to add some um, more useful classes like how we can um, use computers because I think most uh, of people know this, how to use um, computers, but maybe uh, someone don't know it and the schools have to learn them. All right, this is the end of the speaking test. Now you can take a deep breath and relax and please give me two minutes time to review your performance. Okay. Speaking course. This course is made up of five offline speaking videos in which you will learn all the necessary tips and techniques to take the IELTS speaking test with a high score. Tell me about your family. Do you like In addition to that, you will have access to useful grammar and vocabulary resources. Once you finish your course, you will have one online mock test of speaking along with comprehensive feedback under the same exam conditions. Interesting. A very Join us to become our next successful candidate. All right, welcome back and let's review what you did and how you did today. Uh, of course, as you may know, there are four criteria uh, to review the performance and the assess your speaking performance. It's the first one is fluency and coherence. The second is lexical resource, which is the vocabulary. The third is grammatical range and accuracy. And the fourth is pronunciation. So let's move on to the first one, and that's fluency and coherence. I gave you a six in this part. You were able to uh, keep going, to speak at length, and really provide answers that are coherent. You're not going um, off topic, you are not going astray, you're not losing track of your track of your sentences, and you are coherent and fluent, but you need to use a wider range of connectives, of fillers and boosters. Um, you try to show your capability in using a wider range of connectives, mm -hmm. and uh, this will definitely uh, make you seven, at least seven, if you pay attention to this part. Uh, this is uh, definitely going to make a change in your overall band score. So let's move on to a lexical resource, and that's uh, the vocabulary. You had a very good control uh, over what words to choose for each of the, of, the, of the questions, and your answers were to the point, and you, you, uh, you used a wide range of vocabulary, and that is perfect. But uh, you need to paraphrase the questions. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about, for example, the advantages and disadvantages, you have to uh, pay attention to this. Try to rephrase and reword the question. That helps you a lot. That, first of all, that will give you a time to think about the ideas. And second of all, that shows that you know a lot of synonyms. When we're talking about advantages and disadvantages, you can talk, you, you can, for example, say, yes, uh, the pros and cons mm -hmm. are, the benefits are, you know, yeah. so this way you, you show the examiner that you have a control over uh, a wider range of vocabulary. This will definitely uh, help you, um, grammatical range and accuracy. So you're, you are six for vocabulary, 
uh, with regards to a grammatical range and accuracy. Um, I also gave you a six here <laughs> because you used a mix of simple and complex structures. So uh, you used the simple structures beautifully. You were able to form the sentences, but you need to also form complex compound sentences, the conditional sentences. If I were, I yeah. would, okay? Um, uh, you could, for example, use uh, subordinate clauses. Diversify your use of grammar. But you were perfect when it comes to the simple forms of the sentences. You had a very uh, few mistakes. Uh, you said, uh, it's named, the, you were talking about the book, it's named. Mm -hmm. Uh, or it's titled, that would be a better choice for you. It's titled, blah, blah, blah. Um, or, uh, for example, um, you said, we used to it, we are used to it, or we get used to it. So this is only a few mistakes here and there when it comes to grammar, uh, but you did a good job here. Uh, when it comes to pronunciation, uh, you are natural, you sounded natural and everyone has their own accents. We're not talking about accents we're, when it comes to pronunciation. We're talking about the stresses and where to put the stress on which syllable, which you really, um, you, you paid a close attention to this and you did very well in this part. Uh, but um, as, th there are occasional mistakes like poetry instead of poetry. Mm -hmm. Or, or collection instead of collection. And um, I'm aware instead of I'm aware. Mm -hmm. So if you um, pay attention to this part of the pronunciation, you would do definitely a better job and you would increase your band score. Try to um, pay attention to the rise and fall. Um, you should not be monotonous. Uh, you, you should be. Um, you should use the rhythm and the music and what we call uh, the intonation. You should have the natural intonation. Uh, but we're not talking about again accents. We're talking about the intonation and the nat natural performance. Uh, so your overall band score would be six. You are a solid six for now, but you have the potential to be seven easily without Thank any you. effort. Do you have any questions, Olga? No, sir? thank you.